This is the results of my PET scan that was taken uh, January 6, 2021. I had another PET scan back in the fall, maybe September of 2019. Um, I'm taping this now for the first time with my shirt off because I just want to show what kind of shape I'm in because I am not going to go for chemotherapy um, or radiation. Um, I'm about 90%. I was 50%. Now I'm about 90% for the immunotherapy um, to back things up. Uh, I was diagnosed with cancer uh, in 2019, but I knew I had it from maybe like 2016, 2017. 2017 for sure there was a, an incident where I got off a flight from Tampa back to LA. I couldn't walk, man. I just, I, I, I couldn't get out of the seat. I sat in the first class seat from Tampa back to LA. I couldn't get out of the seat. If it wasn't for the 200 people behind me, I'm in first class. So it's like, hey, they get out first before everybody else. If it wasn't for the 200 people behind me, uh, I was embarrassed. It's like, oh, I'm going to get out of this thing, man. But it was so painful. If it was by myself and I wasn't embarrassed, I probably couldn't move. So, something just froze up my body. So uh, I didn't catch the cancer that day, obviously. Who knows how long I've had it. But it's head and neck cancer. You can see the lump here. There's another lump here. Uh, that's my Adam's apple. <laughs> that's my deltoid. Uh it's right here. This one just started. I just got through shaving, so it's it's getting hard to shave, and you can probably hear my voice. I got this big lump inside my mouth, and when it first started forming, I thought, I got some food back there, maybe a piece of lettuce, something flat stuck up to the top, maybe some parsley or some spice or whatever but no it's this lump it constantly feels like there's something there i'm constantly you know trying to clear my throat and uh, sometimes it's empty sometimes because the lump is lumpy food gets trapped inside there and uh, i know that there's something in there it's tickling me it's making me cough it's making me gag so what i try to do i try to gargle sometimes that kicks it out but I got the um, uh, the water pick, the water pick that I use for my teeth. I put it at a very low rate, so it doesn't it doesn't. Uh, it's like a little fire hose, so it's a little uh, weaker stream. But I, I could shoot it back up there, and sometimes clots of of blood and clots of mucus and food. It's like oh man, all that stuff has been trapped in my mouth and stuff like that. But anyway, um, I'm okay with dying. I'm okay with the idea of dying. Um, sometimes I kind of like rushing it, but, uh, um, I thought I could fight it off with, um, nutrition, healthy lifestyle, but that's who I am. I've been Mr. Nutrition and Mr. Healthy Lifestyle my whole entire life, my whole entire life, but I'm not a, 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 a fast food eater. I, I, I just eat real good. So those of you who know me know that. And when I mean really good, I mean really good. Anyway, um, so I'm having difficulty talking. Uh, in, inflammation everywhere. My back, my knees, my hips. <laughs> I, I turned 65 and I feel like 95. So, um, so the immunotherapy. They say it's going to take months and months and months. Um, but the thing about that, it makes your own immunity, your own immune system build up its immunity to fight the cancer. So the uh, white blood cells could recognize the, um, the uh, offensive cancer cells and kind of like neutralize them or something like that. And if I can get rid of this, this is very embarrassing. It's there all the time. And now my voice. Um, I've been talking to people all week, and my voice has been going, going, going. Today, I talked to uh, Gene, uh, one of my financial advisors, and he goes, are you okay, John? It's like, I, I, I made up some, no one knows, by the way. No one knows that I have cancer. <laughs> no one knows. It's not that I know, and I'm around a lot of people. My doctors know. That's it. Um, 
my doctors know, no one knows, no one knows. People that are close to me, my friends, all that stuff. They're gonna start to get suspicious when they hear me talking like this, especially if I'm talking like this, you know, for months and months and months. Um, so, but nobody knows. I don't want anyone to know. I wanna, I just wanna, I wanna keep it to myself. It's my thing. I don't wanna push it onto other people. I don't want other people to hear my symptoms because I don't want to lay that seed in their mind. I don't want to lay that seed in their mind. All up to now, I've only laid the seeds of of progress and growth and and uh, uh, just uh, uh, achievement and uh, uh, power. And you could always do it. Just strive harder. So I've always I've always promoted that. But uh, Gene. <laughs> says, are you okay, John? Says, oh, yeah. What I told him, I says, it's been cold lately, which it has. Um, rain, you know, I, I was riding my bike and just sucking in cold air. I said, my 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 throat's a little irritated, which <laughs> he kind of giggled because he probably said, now, that's a shitty explanation, or I could tell that that was a lie, you know, but, uh, oh, uh, somebody's going to find out. And if they do find out, it's like, I just don't want to talk about it. I don't want them, even if we don't talk about it, I don't want to be in the presence of somebody or on the phone with somebody. And they know, they know that John has cancer. Poor John. He's got the C thing, you know, the C thing, not the C thing, the C thing, you know. And I just don't want to have that conversation but also there's a part of me that, again, I don't want to infect them. I don't want to lay that, that emotional, intellectual, um, intangible toxin on them, you know? And I, that's just me, but I know when I took care of my mother, I knew that all the negativity that went on with my mother and my father, but my mo my mother more so because I was with her every day. Um, and not only was I with my mother, she was in a home that had, I think, 40 other, 40 or 60 other people. Was there, I think there's 100 apartments in, in, the, uh, in that nursing home. So let's say 100, 100 different people uh, that were going through the same thing, end of life, some of them, end of life is really strugglesome, it's painful, it's sad. So every day I went to a nursing home and I and all that stuff just got into my brain. It got into my brain and I kept being strong. And I, I, the people were cute and you could see that they were all scared. They're always happy to see me. Hey, here's a healthy guy come in to visit his mother. Oh, how nice Jenny is to come visit his mother and stuff like that, you know. And... Uh, um, I just knew that there's no way that would not affect me, that that would not affect me. And at nighttime, I was strength training Fabricio Verdum, who, who ended up becoming the UFC world heavyweight UFC champion and MMA mixed martial artist. So I was training him at night, seeing my mother in the day, then going to see my mother after I would train Fabricio. Fabricio never knew I was taking care of my mother, you know. But uh, <clears throat> I forget that guy's name, the black guy who played the Black Panther. Supposedly, nobody knew he was battling with cancer. I think his family knew. I think his family knew, but no one professionally or at least that's the way they say it. He's probably had some professional advisors in his life who knew but didn't say anything. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, uh, downplay to any percentage his story. But no one knew that this guy was battling cancer. They just knew that he was losing a lot of weight, which I did recently. I was one sixty-five. Now I'm one. 55, 155, man. I can't believe I'm 150. I actually went down to 154. But anyway, um, I guess I'm recording this uh, just to kind of like document it. I know a lot of people are going through this or and or uh, uh, maybe much worse than this. 
I would say a majority of the people are scared. Uh, I'm not scared. I think, I think a part of me, it, I'm frustrated. Yeah, there's a level of frustration. Um, it's not easy keeping this from other people. It's not easy keeping this from other people. So that's a, that's a strain. That's a drain. That's a, oh, what did I tell them last time? <laughs> what did I tell them last time? Because I'm just lying all the time. Oh, what's that lump on your neck, John? Oh, I got bit by a spider in Joshua Tree. That's what, I, that's what I've been telling people. I got bit by a spider. Well, that spider bit me like three years ago, and the lump is still here, and it's actually bigger, and now I got another lump. So... Um, but I did get bit by a spider once, and my lymph glands did did swell up, but not like this. I don't know if you could see it, but it's like right here. It's really hard. It seemed like it was sticking out more before, but it was softer. Now it's hard. It's growing in. It's growing into my throat. And I can feel it wrapping around shit. I can feel every once in a while I get a twinge in my ear and in my jaw. So I get that locked jaw, and I, so far I've been able to, oh, Oh, just I gotta close it real close. If I open it, one time I my my jaw, oh, it locked on me. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm just not scared of dying. I'm not scared of dying. I'm actually thinking it's like, oh man, that's a pretty good time to go. I mean, really, it's a pretty good time to go. The COVID thing is, it's here. Uh, a lot of people are, are committing suicide. Uh, at least it's like, oh, if I die during COVID, they're probably going to say I died of COVID. And that's, uh, I did not die of COVID unless I catch COVID and, and, you know, it contributes to it, but I'm, I'm dying of cancer right now until I go in to see Dr. Fisher here. Here's his business card. And, um, but the immunotherapy is, uh, yeah. It's like a 30-minute session. It's intravenous. And it uh, says it may cause nausea. <laughs> it can go up to three months, maybe six months. Who knows? The thing is, I just don't want any of this medical stuff done. I just don't, I don't trust medical science, nor it's like, okay. I know a lot of people are going to think this is negative, but it's not. I'm 65 years old. How much longer do I have to be here? I mean, honestly, I'm 65 Things have changed so much. I hate people on cell phones. Uh, there's just so many people around here. Just all the things that that people do. People are so mad at one another. Uh, people are just uh, they're rude. They're 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 scared. Let's put it that way. They're scared. I don't want to say people are rude. That's putting them down. But saying that they're scared, that's the truth. And by them being scared, they act rude. They act inconsiderate. They act dumbfounded. They act, you know, like uh, uh, selfish. They don't, they don't, they're not a team player. Um, and I understand that. But that's the way they were before COVID. COVID's making them worse and the impact from COVID. So, you know, uh, my business... I, don't, I, can't, I can't even talk. I finished writing a book. You know, let me get it out here. I finished writing a book. And I'm having challenges promoting it. I'm having challenges promoting it because COVID's lockdown. I wanted to go to gyms. This right here. Wolves of Crow Time. The Untold Story of Milo. I spent eight years writing this book. And yeah, much of it. I had cancer towards the end, obviously. But I'm really proud of this book, and I think people would love to read it. It's on Amazon, made a USA Today bestseller. But I can't walk, I can't contact gym owners or whatever and say, hey, you know, I'd like to give a seminar at your at your facility or go to, you know, just like shake hands or be with people. Everything is Zoom now, uh, Instagram. It's like I'm sitting in the same seat all day long. I'm producing the content, and then I'm, I'm posting and logging the content, and then I'm responding to it. It's just it's a horrible way to do business, man. When I was successful, I went to trade shows, maybe four or five trade shows a year. It doesn't sound like much, but there's a lot of preparation to get there, and there's a lot of follow-up to do once you get back from there and stuff like that. So those... And I did live TV all the time in studios around the world, uh, uh, presentations. I gave lectures and stuff like that for 
personal trainer organizations, strength coach organizations, physical therapy organizations. Am I going to be able to do that when I'm done with this immunotherapy stuff? You know, I don't think I'm going to be that useful. So yeah, this, this situation for us right now, all people, and especially people of my age range, people of my age range, we're no longer that type of human being. We're no longer that type of human being. And just because we look the same, same anatomical features, that doesn't mean we are the same. We're wired differently. We're always getting wired differently, but instead of getting wired differently, progressively, knowing the planet, knowing the plants, knowing the water, knowing the animals, living off Mother Nature, this beautiful, vibrant, abundant planet, everything has gone artificial. Everything has gone technological. Everything has gone uh, electronic. Everything has gone satellite beaming things. I beam here from California and boom, it's over there in London in a, in, in a, in a second, you know. Uh, and just the way you communicate. I mean, when I grew up, maybe, well, cell phones came out in like 1999, 2000. So all the way up to 2000, man, you could walk into a coffee shop